Now, what is going on everyone? Today we are going to start working on our test node with Docker series. And before we get started, I just wanted to point out a few things that you will need. So for one, you are going to need Docker, of course, and uh, you can download like Docker desktop by just going to docker.com and by downloading their uh, desktop application for your operating system. And if you're not super familiar with like what Docker is, I would really recommend reading through this guide, what is a container, which basically explains, okay, a container, it allows you to bundle up the application that you want to run uh, with all of its dependencies. And this allows you to uh, basically have an isolated thing running, which they call a Docker container. And you can run this one directly like on the operating system, like with Docker, uh, and you do not need to have like multiple virtual machines. So they have a really nice image explaining the difference here. And by the way, that's a very uh, common interview question. What is the difference between Docker container and virtual machines? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that is what we are going to need, what we will need. And I also wanted to point out like one other thing. So while I was trying to, uh, prepare for the series, I kind of got stuck at one moment um, because I wasn't able to figure out how to make um, post or like when Postgres is actually ready to accept connections. Because if Postgres starts, if the container is running, it does not mean that it is able to accept connections. Um, it might take a little bit of time. And uh, while I was like researching this, I stumbled across this blog and I noticed like it's kind of similar, like what is described here. And I would really recommend checking out this blog. It's like really good. It's jdlm.info. Uh, I'll also link it in the description down below. And they built a to-do list app here. Um, and uh, what kind of did the trick for me was like this little bash script or this waiting for when Postgres is ready. So that basically was the last piece uh, that I needed to make this run. So uh, thank you very much for this blog. Like it's really good. Um, I would really recommend checking it out. Um, our setup is going to be a little bit different. So we're going to do like a little bit more in some regards and a little bit less in other areas. But you're going to see that in a second. Cool. So now that we have that done, I just want to walk you through the application that we want to build. So it's a really simple application. And maybe before I even attempt to uh, like walk you through the code or anything, I'm just going to show you what it can do. And for this, I just wanted to point one thing out. So in order to make this work, you need to have your local Postgres instance running. So make sure Postgres is running locally and create like a database. So my database is called test node with Docker. And you can either take use like PSQL to create your database or you can use PG admin, which is a little bit easier because it's like a graphical user interface. So you can click on database, uh, create a database, then you can put in like the name. So I will not do that right now because I already did. And then you're going to get your database and then you can connect. And um, as far as schema is concerned, there is like one um, directory here in this project, which is called migrations. And this contains like the SQL statement to create the table. So as you can see, it's super simple. It only contains like an ID as a primary key an email in the first name, simply because we're not super concerned with the actual application logic, but we actually only care about like Docker and, and making this work. And one more thing, before you run this application, uh, make sure that you put in the correct configuration here. So make sure that you go to config and local.json and maybe you have a different password. Maybe your password is not empty, like in my case. Uh, maybe you have a different user or you probably have a different username. So make sure that the credentials that you put in here are correct um, because otherwise you cannot connect like to your database. Um, I'm also going to put all the setup instructions in the readme. So if that was like a little bit too fast, like you can go through it um, step by step and you are going to have like a detailed explanation. 
Okay, so let's just check out this thing. I'm first going to truncate this table real quick. So truncate means I'm going to make it empty. And at the moment, there's nothing in there, right? So I'm going to say, okay, select star from developer. And the goal here is basically to just have a simple CRUD application where we basically only have to see. So the create, you have like one endpoint, you send it like uh, you give it an email and a first name, and it's going to put this thing inside of the Postgres database. That is basically all it does. And I can show you how this works. So I'm going to uh, head over to Postman and I'm going to hit localhost port 8080 because that is where the uh, node server runs. And I'm going to give it an email and I'm going to give it a first name. And then I'm going to send this. And as you can see, nice, I get like a 201 created. And if I now go to this database and run this query again, then you see that this entry was successfully inserted into the database. Uh, now, one more thing, this um, database, it contains a unique constraint. So if you attempt to insert this again, then it will fail. And you're also not going to get like a meaningful error message back simply because I did not want to make the application too complicated because we only care about uh, like Docker and Docker Compose at the moment. So if you ever run into this error, what you can just do is you can either pick a different email or you can just truncate like the table. So you can just say truncate uh, developer. And by the way, that is going to be the nice thing when we are going to test with Docker containers because we're going to spin the database up, execute all the tests, and then we're going to throw the database away. So there's like no need to uh, like do this manual step here to always truncate the table because we're going to just spin up the new database every single time uh, we are going to run our tests. Okay, cool. So I would say that's it pretty much for the walkthrough. I'm just going to quickly like give an overview of the code. Um, it's not like complicated or anything. I just split it over multiple files. So in case um, we add like additional logic at some point, we don't have to refactor like that much. So we have an index.js file, which is importing like a server. So server is a class, and then it's going to just run the server. And the server itself is like a pretty simple class. So it's just an express app. So as you can see, this dot app equals express. And then it's just plugging in like a JSON parsing middleware and a router. And this router, as we've just seen, it only contains like one route, which is a post request to uh, slash dev. And I offloaded like the request handling to controller, which you should always do also if you run production, like don't put the implementation directly here in the routes file. This is really like not so good in terms of code quality. And this controller, it doesn't really do much. Um, it just validates like whether the two fields are there. So it's not going to validate if your email looks like a proper email or something like that. Um, that is kind of out of the scope of this uh, tutorial. And um, then it's going to make use of a service and it's going to tell the service, hey, uh, create this thing in the database and the service itself uh, is going to make use of a data access object. And this data access object is going to um, actually talk to the database. And we're just using Next.js simply because it's uh, yeah, easy and simple. Didn't want to use like a full blown uh, or ORM here. And uh, yeah. That's just what we do. And um, it's a pretty simple structure. Um, now you could say, okay, maybe we could have left out like the service and the data access object. That's kind of true. Uh, we don't really need it like for our case because it's just so simple. But I just wanted to have, I just wanted to make sure that it has like a proper structure so that in case someone finds this repo and just clones it and takes it like, you know, as a template that not much has to be refactored. And I also don't want to encourage people to put everything into just one file uh, because that just gets super messy. Yeah, so that's it pretty much for this code walkthrough. I think what we can now do in the next video, we can start setting up Docker and making sure that we can run this entire application 
inside of a Docker container. So that is what we're going to do next. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave me a comment. Uh, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at production coder. And also I've set up an email list in the description down below. So if you guys want to have a say in what we build next on this channel, uh, then you can just sign up there and every once in a while I'm going to send an email along. So again, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah, let's just test Node with Docker.